my slides last night, but I forgot to bring them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, anyway, it is good because normally I don't use slides for the simple reason that my general talks are really general, so they don't nearly need a slide. And also because slides become more technical. To stop being the first talk and also so-called keynote address, I thought I would uh, uh, give a very general overview of some signal processing which I know. And, uh, I mean, uh, work they are working for the past uh, 46 years now. Okay. Uh, what I, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Professor Sapna Benanji, when she contacted me, I thought she made a mistake. You know, because uh, I don't belong to VLSI area, and I don't also do any other signal processing other than speech processing. And uh, I don't see much of its interest in speech processing here. And uh, so I thought she must have, by Mr. Shepard, they cannot be really ignorant of the only one. So, and I tried to confirm her, she said no, indeed, she was trying to contact me and so on. Anyway, thank you very much for your kind invitation. And uh, I hope you won't be disappointed because uh, my talk won't be directly related to VLSI, although in that, you know, any such speaker, he just occasionally mentions a few words, you know, because nobody will ask questions on them, so. Uh, but, uh, uh, so what I, the object of my presentation here, first of all, I should also tell a couple of uh, words about myself uh, and my relation to IIT Kharagpur. I was a student of this very same department when most of you are not born, of course, 1961. Uh, AC department, IIT Kharagpur, but I was a student only for one month. <laughs> I got dragged, dragged in Patel Hall and I just left immediately after one month. And of course, I joined the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. But uh, after that, I have been visiting this institute several times. I think. Uh, Last two, three years I might not have visited much, but otherwise I visit and I keep in touch. I have a very high regard among all IITs, this particular institute, and for the kind of research that goes on and also for the kind of humility they display in terms of this institute. That is where I like this institute compared to many other institutions. And uh, although, of course, all IITs are good, all other institutes are also equally good. But this one, of course, maybe I have special affinity or affection to this place. And uh, so are the people here. So they have uh, been very kind uh, to invite me several times here. In fact, when I was just looking <coughs> through some points which I want to make at this talk, suddenly I re realized that the points I'm collecting or the points I made when I some such a talk, invited talk in 1999, I don't know what conference that was, when each department was in the IIT uh, uh, character. But fortunately, I think barring one or two, most of you are not there at this at that time, so I am I am safe. The few who heard me maybe might have heard me. I'm sure they would have forgotten all this. Thing. So, uh, so the uh, the theme of my talk is somewhat basic, but all the same, it has arisen out of my commitment or my involvement in uh, speech research for uh, speech research means speech signal processing research for over now 40, 45 years. I started my research career in 1966. And uh, uh, people keep on asking me, why are you sticking to the same area and so on, why don't you change? I said, there's no need to change because the more I learn about it, the less I seem to know about it. So that is the reason why I said I have to uh, stick to this. And so my views, most of you may not agree, you don't have to agree. But you know, uh, since I was asked to stand here, so you have to listen to me. So, and uh, my views on signal processing, again, as arising out of uh, this, and also, what is it that is need to be done? In fact, I would say uh, uh, the need for new models of computing for uh, doing signal processing. So that is what uh, is important. It is not just signal processing means some operations kind of a thing. Especially when some of you are working in natural signals, especially like speed, you will see that the current signal processing algorithms are just not inadequate. Not, not adequate. You, see, you simply 
they are not able to extract the kind. Just you know, this is I know this conference is about VLSI and signal processing, but you know, and VLSI is uh, uh, although I don't know much about it, it is about implementation of an algorithm. That means how it is to be done. But what I am going to talk about is what is to be done. What is to be done in a signal processing? That's what I want to go, uh, talk about it. And uh, so, but while discussing this, I may be discussing some very basic things, even as ridiculous, as simple as signal, signal processing, and so on. Although it looks that, of course, all of you are experts here, and uh, you say, why are you talking about such basic things? But to, to my biggest surprise, because first of all, some of them are my own views, and my biggest surprise, many people don't even get the meaning of, for example, what is a signal? That is, if you are, it's a, at least that's what I ask in classes, in some seminars and so on. So at least my view of that, what it is, you, you may not agree with that, so that's what I, uh, so I'll be discussing the, what is signal processing, and what needs to be done to extract the information signal processing is what I'm going to focus on. And uh, uh, so basically what I'm saying is, we need, I will be discussing what needs to be computed. And uh, people thought, uh, you know, we went through a lot of, uh, people thought, you know, the, it is uh, computation and algorithms are the main issues. And we know what to do with a signal, otherwise kind of a thing it is. But uh, that is how, if you recall, we went through what is called uh, computation, computer crisis. That is, it's, most of you, as I told you, were not born, but in 70s, 80s, we were all struggling to get a little time of computer, you know, and uh, with the puncher cards and getting the output after six, uh, two months and so on, and uh, with all errors. That is how the computer, and we are definitely looking for some good computers and so on. Computing on the computing crisis, we had idea probably, but uh, we didn't know how to implement them. The computing was a crisis, uh, computation crisis, I may want to call it. But later, you know, in the 80s and so on, if you see, it was a, when computers became very powerful, it became software crisis. Software crisis, in fact, if you, any of you happen to see, I think it is the September issue of 2005, uh, right of the spectrum, the title is Software Crisis. You see? And it is interesting that you cannot produce a, pro, you know, program to work free and so on and so on. But because then, Computing power is enough, but it is software the, uh, crisis has come. But then, somewhere along the way, although it is not highlighted, then it became an algorithmic crisis. <coughs> algorithmic crisis means you don't know how to put some ideas into your algorithm, otherwise you cannot write a program. That's it. And I come up with now a fourth crisis, probably that, uh, that becomes more important, it is called the understanding crisis. We simply don't know about a problem, first of all, speech, when you are listening to me, you don't know how you are listening, how you are interpreting, how you are understanding, and you also don't know how you are producing. So if you don't know how it is, how you are doing all of this, how can you write a program, how can you write an algorithm? That is the one I want to focus on. And uh, actually, if uh, when I, President Obama, when he was contesting for elections, and two years before, I think there were primaries, uh, they go on and so on. I was listening to each one of those lectures. I think I was fascinated by his speech, not, not only the content, but the delivery of that. In fact, it was almost one and a half, two years before the final election. I'm not exaggerating here. I did tell somebody sitting by my side, in fact, at home also, this fellow will become president of the United States. That means what? As a human being, you can really, of course, some of you also might have heard, maybe you might not have paid attention. If you pay attention, there is something that strikes you in this speech. You are able to extract that. And what is the signal processing algorithm we are using? God only knows. And not far from IIT Karakpur, your own uh, Armin Kejriwa. In fact, uh, recently I heard his, I, I was not paying much attention to him until he was, uh, he became chief minister, you see. And when he chief minister, after what ceremony, he has addressed the audience. Listen to his speech. In fact, I am very fond of listening to speech, not because I like somebody or dislike somebody, you see. 
I also listen to Lalu Prasad Yadav and Yadav Bihari Vajpayee. And I have done my own analysis because being in the speech area, and uh, that is what uh, attacked. In fact, if you, if you uh, listen to the uh, Arun Kedrawal, that uh, brief speech, you could again feel it is coming from the bottom of it. There is something in that speech, it is the delivery, which, you know, an actor cannot do, you know, or if somebody reads from something, you cannot do. And the hallmark of a great individual. And of course, already he has proved himself. And I think Ratpur must be proud of it because he was, uh, he was a student of this. We are really uh, happy to see that. So what I mean to say in all of this is, the signal processing that human being does, you see, in, uh, in his, uh, uh, and the, the interpretation, and is there an algorithm? There's no way to articulate and say, these are the interesting life, I forgot to tell you. Obama's speech, after I came up with this conclusion, after just before the election or after he was elected, there is an article in some newspaper, about half a page article on explaining about his speech and the, the, the greatness of his speech and so on. Somebody made a scientific analysis, not from the content alone, but the delivery part of it and the speech part of it. It is, it is not that he has rehearsed or something, it is coming from the bottom of the heart. In fact, you may say, why am I interested in this? In fact, uh, it is uh, right now, for the past few years, in my institute, and of course, IIT Kharagpur also, there is a group working on it. We want to find out the so-called, when somebody is speaking, whether he's speaking naturally, or he's speaking emotionally, or whether he has uh, some other attribute, which you can, you know, these are all the things that, what, what makes somebody's emotion, let us say, angry, or sad, or something, what is that signal? What is the message? In the, what is the content in the signal? And how do you extract it? And it's a challenge. If only a human being can do, there is no computational algorithm can do. That's why we are able to write any number of papers without ever solving the problem. You see? Because we don't know how we do. If, in fact, on a telephone, when you say, hello, then the first thing you will ask is, are you not well? And uh, the it is interesting, the human way of processing that signal. And if you say, Allah, then you say it is not worth talking to that. <laughs> beautiful. Just to see, beautiful. And uh, it is not that, uh, like IBM is saying, the day, collect 10,000 dollars or 20,000 dollars, you don't collect 20,000 dollars. You may not have heard that person uh, before, but still you can make out that he is uh, not well or against so What is that processing that takes place in the speech? And it's a challenge. No, say, tell me, this is the signal processing algorithm, you, professor, you don't know. Uh, we have it, I would like to borrow that algorithm and apply it. And we don't know how we do it. So, there is a human way of doing these things, which we can never articulate, but we see that um, happening. So, that is why we need to understand, and uh, the, uh, the, the human way of, Doing this, unless you know that you can never, uh, you never uh, write a program kind of a thing. So, in fact, it is the human, if, if human reference are not there, for example, then we will not know our signal processing algorithms, we put it on the top and say they are great. But it is the human reference which humbles, humbles us and it shows the limitations of our understanding of the signal processing issues and so on. Consider the following. <coughs> A distinction between that I will after mention this. Just think about uh, uh, about this uh, for a few minutes uh, after the talk or whatever it is. As a human being, well, first of all, these two statements: processing and representation. Processing and representation versus representation and processing of a signal. Processing and representation versus representation and processing. If I keep repeating, then it should set your mind thinking about it. You see? Processing and representation. As a human being, when you look at this, what is it that you do? You don't assume that this is black and white. What is it that you do? You don't start saying it is black pixel, white pixel, red pixel, whatever it is. You simply say it is VLSI. You already process it. And then you have presented it. And how you process, of course. Each person will articulate in his own way, but there is no unique way of doing it. So, as a human being with your biological system and a sensory mechanism, 
you are able to process first and then represent. That is the hallmark of a biological network. On the other hand, in a computer, what is it that you do? First represent it. You sample it or you know, you put it ASCII code or whatever it is and you represent back or pixels and then keep cracking your head how to process this. And this gap, that means you can see the human way of crossing the biological network, which can which cannot do the other way, it cannot represent this. Tomorrow, if I ask you what did you see, you will only say we are say and single crossing. You will not say that I have seen green pixel, red pixel, and so on. <laughs> Whereas the machine, you scan it and put it in a pixel, it will only see those pixels and not the So you can see the distinction. It is an architectural mismatch. The architectural mismatch between a biological uh, system and a biological neural network and a, uh, and a machine or a conventional phone. And you can see the more you probe it, the more that is how it is that, that feature of the biological system, neural network architecture which enables you to process the signal the way you are doing. And that is why most of the algorithms that we have are trivial. They don't do anything that a human being is doing. And that is why the field of speech recognition, speaker recognition, any of those fields which I know, because I, those are the fields I know, everybody says we have made some progress. Of course you have made progress. Progress you made not because you have a great algorithm that you have designed, but progress you made because there is more computing power. It is like a magician showing something it is not that you understood more about it. In fact, because of computing power, you are understanding less of speech. So, please note that it, uh, any of those of you who cannot appreciate this point, you can easily see the comparison of the chess playing program by Deep Blue and a Grandmaster. Because you can always say that uh, computer won and uh, Grandmaster lost or something. But that is the way he does it, very different from the way machine does. Millions of uh, moves or you know, alternatives are turned out in a machine, whereas here he looks at in a greatest garden, even Mitsunadana doesn't look more than you know, two, three layers down and also maybe 50 alternatives. He cannot do more than that. So there is an architectural mismatch here. And it is that architectural mismatch which drives us to think. All right, I cannot do what a biological network can I do something at least slightly better than the conventional machine. That is the theme of my talk. I am going to uh, elaborate a few of these as we go ahead. So, yeah. and in fact, it is interesting. Those of you who are familiar with neural networks a little bit and also might have heard what is called the Patsatram proposed by Rosenblatt. At that time, there was euphoria. People thought. Now you don't need anything because he demonstrated pattern recognition automatically recognizing the characters and so on using a perceptron model. And they said, oh no, perceptron and related one is a more better computing model and we can solve. But thanks to again, Rosenblatt never said that this is a generalized model. In fact, a lot of us, at least the students and some books also don't highlight it. Perceptron model, if you see, there is one layer before that which is called the association unit. The association unit is linking to the sensory mechanism. It is the sensory inputs, some parts of it is associated with one unit. So different regions are associated. That is, adding the output of sensors to the, to the association unit. And it is the output of association unit that goes to the person from the classifier or whatever it is. And he did, he did mention that. And so what Minsky and Pepper brought out is that the limitation why this uh, didn't take off is because of the fixed association uh, units. What do you mean by fixed? In that model where it demonstrated the association units are fixed to the sensory layer, whereas a human being is, is not. Our sensory mechanism is such that it is a dynamic association. It is a selective, whichever way you want to call. Yeah, I am talking and you appear to be listening to me, but you can be thinking something else. Or when whatever I say, you may be focusing on some part and ignoring the rest of it. That kind of an ability, dynamically adjusting to that, there is no algorithm guiding this. And uh, so it is that, that is the human uh, reference having said, uh, this is the one, it is that lack of understanding led to one of the big 
biggest problem for all of us, no matter which kind of discipline you are in, whether you are health engineering, computer science, anybody for that matter, in fact, even an ordinary layman, what is the challenge we are facing now? Forget about VLSA and all the, none of these are the What is the challenge all of us are facing? Dealing with the data. It is dealing with the data. What data? Dealing with what is called the audio and video bits. This is the data. Dealing with the signal data, signal bits, is the greatest challenge that humanity has to face. All other things became pretty, not that you have solved them, because they became, they became you know, uh, nothing compared to this challenge. Why do I say this? Yeah, already so many cameras are flashing and so many videos are flashing and so on. So much data you collect and you store in gigabytes, bigger terabytes of data. But what are you doing? You are not processing any of them. You simply store them. And when the memory is full or when you are not interested, Microsoft gave a beautiful command called delete star star star, so you delete it. It's exactly what is happening with that. Why? Why can't you process? Why can't? When I say process, what do you mean by dealing with the data? What do you mean by that? Searching. You can't organize because you are ready to take the next video. So the point here is you, this audio, dealing with audio and video data, why is it so difficult? Because the huge volume of data and it is not like ASCII code where you can just give a string and you can search for it. You cannot search. You cannot match a page uh, or you cannot match speed and hence you don't know how to retrieve this abstracted data that you have stored. And it is abstracted because you have no patience to structure it. And that is the biggest challenge all of us. Because you may say, why am I sharing a challenge? You think that since I have taken, for example, if there is slides, like somebody present a PowerPoint in a, in a train we talk or something, what some of us will do? And we simply keep on clicking, thinking that I will have, will ask somebody in a PowerPoint, say, what do you do? You never look at them again. So the point here is that there is enough debt, so much of data, you have no way of dealing with that, capturing that. You have no that, and that is how most of the material that we collect will just throw it away. And uh, of course it's dangerous because you don't have patience. If you are writing notes, then there is a possible because you have to understand the right. Whereas the moment you click it, that is that is not. So and uh, so this is the challenge that all of us just you know. It's obvious to see if it is a characters and numbers represented in a bits related to characters or numbers stored in ASCII code or similar thing. That is what is called a data process. It's a data process. And the statistical methods are used in data process. Whereas, if you talk about the samples and pixels, <coughs> samples and pixels, it is no more, you cannot come under it. It is a single process. And, uh, and you cannot use the conventional method of searching, matching, and so on. There's no template matching. You can never match. You can never match two speed signals. I can say R, uh, and next time I, you can say R. Uh, for the rest of your life, you say you can never produce the signals in a time in your life. But still, as a human being, you will be able to say in the same amount. So that is the that. So the samples and pixels, the information is available in the signal part of it. And the human being is able to attack it, but machines will just don't know any algorithm to do that. You see? And, that is, and also it is interesting, because I, when I tell, especially in classes, I do that, I, I can see many students are here. And when I say it, it is dealing with these signals, and especially natural signals, whether it is audio, video, or anything, and the you need a field of mathematics called random process, stochastic process. And whereas dealing with the data, you need more statistics. Why do you need a stochastic? Because the signal and the information, there is a time, there is a sequence that is involved here. Whereas in the data, there is no sequence involved. So of course, at the language level, character, that, that there is a sequence. I am talking about the basic recognition of character. So the question now is, what is the challenge in audio and video bits? It is the, it is the signal processing. The signal processing, if you have, you can do a good signal processing, that is the answer. Okay. And one of the challenges, in fact, we are also working in the lab. Of course, we, we may the video, video people are already doing, we may retrieve all kind of thing, you know, from uh, given some face or something, how do you retrieve it, uh, how many times the face has occurred in the video file and things like this. And uh, whereas we do a similar, trying to do a, a similar thing in audio sense. 
on that video, the problem with audio is everybody has a cell phone and everybody is, is want to simply keep on talking and talking also so casually talking and so you have no way of taking down notes or uh, organizing it and uh, but the easy thing is to store it as samples but then they have to listen. The Levi fellows are escaping and he said it's not my wife, I didn't say this. So all these uh, things are coming because they know that you have no way of proving kind of thing. Okay. So this is a uh, signal processing, you know. And now let me come to some basics of signal processing that we are talking about. You see, this is very elementary, but all the same. I, I talk, I ask a lot of people, uh, in my, my students, not the faculty, what is a signal? And uh, what is signal processing? Okay. I think there are many students can't answer this. How can you make two? I, I was looking for at least three or four students coming up with a similar answer. I'm not saying same answer. No one can answer that. And that is where we need to understand, at least I, I think students level, they should understand what is the signal in what way it is different from their uh, data. This is because, in fact, I asked long back when I was teaching at IIT Mandar, and I asked my students because I introduced a course on principles of communication for computer science students. With great reluctance, they were taking that course anyway. So the uh, point here is, and uh, I was asking how many of you have heard about signal processing? Everybody writes, no, sir, we have done that. We have done in a one semester course on data processing. The computer data processing has nothing to do with signal processing. So, what is a signal and a signal? To say it briefly, pardon me, all, all the senior people and so on, at least those who are familiar with it for the next one minute or two minutes. A signal has the information only in the relations among the sequence of samples. It's the sequence that is important is the signal. And when you say information in the signal, what is the information you are talking about? The information you are talking about in a signal is about the system that generated the signal. So it is done. If it is a speech, if it is a speech signal, the information that about the speech production mechanism is embedded in the sequence of samples in that signal. And this system is unknown. You see, you cannot, even if I don't let you see how my lips and tongue are moving, but you get access to the speech signal and from that you infer. So that is signal. Signal processing is manipulating the sequence of numbers to extract the characteristics of the unknown system. That is, in this case, speech case, it is a speech production mechanism, and that is the signal processing. And that is why you can see there are courses like, for example, signals and systems. I ask again my student, you studied a course on signals and system. What is signal? Why, why those two words are clumped together? Again, no answer from any of them. Because somebody has given a book, so we are reading. Signal and system are linked. A signal is generally procured by a system. And when you are talking about signal processing, system forces the knowledge or information about it in the sequence of samples. And your extraction of information simply means what is the knowledge that is in the sequence. And that is the signal processing. And you may say, why do I have to highlight this? In fact, this is the one, for example, that's why there are four some signals and systems which are linked. A system and signal are synonymous. You know, when you, when you excite a system with a, let's say, a linear system with a nipple, you get an output which has relations which uniquely describe the system that means the system characteristics are the same relations. And that is how all those, uh, uh, you know, inside some feature parameters, models of system, all those things are called. Signals and systems. And the, one more thing we need to discuss, this is also very elementary, again, senior people, pardon me on this, is, uh, is about the synthetic and natural signals. A synthetic and natural signal, no, because all signals and systems book, all DSP book, deal only with the synthetic signals and systems. Only toward the end of the chapter, some application, they will devote something, otherwise they deal only with that. That is why, DSP books, if you see, okay, if you are, if you accept this meaning of signal, signal processing, DSP has no yes at all. It is only DP. 
there is no signal processing signal that is processed there. It is digital processing tools is what you acquire. For example, if you take the DFT using for Fourier transform, I can apply to any sequence or number. I can take heights of all of you and apply DFT on that. It's only a tool. Same thing with convolution, convolution, circular convolution. They have nothing to do with the signal. The signal part comes only when you try to interpret the system information that is available. And that is how we are distributed in natural and a, a synthetic signal and system. In order to develop some algorithm, you may need synthetic signals and system. But to apply the natural signal, you have to worry about one more thing. And what is that one more thing? As I told you, like, when I say natural signals, I always have speak in my mind because I am biased toward that. But uh, let us take P. As I told you, every time you try to utter a word like a R or E or something, we have no problem. None of you, have, most of you have not heard me before, but you say, oh yes, you said R or you said E. But the beauty of that is, you can see that each time you utter R, any number of times, the signal is different. But the content the message is the same. So that means in any, any natural signal, most signals are attributed to natural signals. There are synthetic cases in communication signals. I am not talking about it right now. Any natural signal, it can never be referred to a second time. But the content is message is there. And it is the variability is the one that brought in the subject all of for undergraduates it's a compulsory course. What is what is the course? Probability of random process. A random process because random process is not random. There are characteristics random random process produces a sample function and the sample function is nothing but a signal. I also take, you know, don't like other books. We have actual because books have said people talk about a random signal. Sorry. There is nothing like a random signal there. If the signal is like a sample function, it is a signal. There is no randomness there. Randomness is in the process. Random process, you figure the process, but not what you get in the sample function. If, if it was a random signal, sample function was a random signal, then you can see in a coin tossing experiment, it should be random head and random tail. You cannot say it is head and tail because the samples are random head and random tail. So I think this is a, why that is important here is then you can <coughs> see, appreciate why. Otherwise, they will say, oh, we studied this uh, course, random process, teachers say something, I don't understand it, joint probability, and all that is. See, that is how you drive away the students with all the equations, but once they get the feel of, hopefully, even then, they, people will go away in a different manner because they don't like equations. But uh, it is the sequence of random variables or rather than the collection or a set of random variables that, that makes a distinction between a random process. And hence, that is why in the signal, once you produce a signal, signal amplitudes have no significance at all. For example, if my speech message is conveyed here as well as there, same uh, information, the signal amplitude here is different from the there, how is it that the message is same? So the amplitude has no information. In the relations among the samples that is there, uh, that is there. Because a human being, we are so good at capturing that. That is the point I want to make. And, uh, and we don't have algorithms to do this. I will come to the standard algorithms. So, once you talk about this, of course, that's why you call spectrum, spectrum estimation and so on. Then, the one of the dominant topics in signal processing is time frequency analysis. The tremendous confusion, at least among my students, and of course, passed on by me, of as a teacher, time frequency analysis. We give so much importance to the word frequency. Frequency is only a concept. It doesn't exist. Time exists. You may say, why am I, why am I saying this? Now, okay, take a Fourier transform. If you use the projection uh, 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 interpretation of this, take a signal and project it on various sinusoids, complex sensor, it doesn't matter. Then you will get the Fourier projection, or Fourier, whatever it is, Fourier transform. That's what you get, projection. All right. That means any signal, no matter what it is, you have to project it on an infinite sinusoid. You can never, the sinusoid cannot be defined over a finite direction. It is in that way Fourier transform is there. But what if that is only a hypothetical as a, as a, as a, as a, as a concept, but you can never implement it because I don't have infinite duration signal, nor I have infinite uh, duration sinusoid, nor the projection sinusoid. 
be careful that uh, it is a project. Why is this computer now, if you interpret the Fourier transform as a projection concept, if you say still sinusoid infinite, what about damper sinusoid? Damper sinusoid, notice that it is not a sinusoid. Damper sinusoid is not a sinusoid, there is no way related to sinusoid. And our usual time frequency analysis where we talk about monocomponent, multi-component signals and sinusoids and so on. Those are discrete sinusoids which you want to use, use in the communication situation because they are synthetic. Whereas a damper sinusoid and things like this, it is a continuum. We can say when a damper sinusoid the frequency response is, it's a continuum. So you don't have signal frequencies anymore. And if you have to say already damper sinusoid the signal is compressed. Now you extend the damping so much that finally you make it an impulse. And try to find out the Fourier transform or so it's half an impulse. What does it mean? In fact, I, I used to wonder because if all the sinusoids are all infinity, whereas impulse is there are delta function everywhere, it is zero except that is equal to zero like this, we are bored with that definition. And how can you project that until an infinite sinusoid? I don't understand it all. It doesn't make any sense. So that is where the confusion comes. You see, the time frequency analysis is good, but the issues of time and frequency is mostly in the communication area where you have synthetic signals like in radar, sonar, or whatever it is. But uh, in the natural cases, no. It is very difficult to explain. Of course, we borrow those ideas, but we have to be very careful in this. So time frequency analysis. And apart from this, the projection uh, interpretation, we have other artifacts. If you are implemented by digital means, you, have, you get all kinds of DS artifacts, finite duration and all kinds of things, you know, finite working. And so these are some of the issues that you have. And instead of this, instead of time frequency analysis, consider the following. When you are listening to mean speed, although of course, because we have so much hooked up on the frequency, somebody will say, oh, our ear has some short time for your frequency analysis, spectrum analysis. God has not designed it to do spectrum analysis, sorry. We simply designed it and uh, it is the, the combined effect when you are listening to something, your ability to extract the information about the system by dynamically adjusting your temporal or other resolution that uh, the way you want is the beauty of the human development mechanism integrated <laughs> along with the sensory mechanism. They are not isolated. And that is what is happening in speed processing. And hence, it is instead of calling it a time frequency, can you call it as a signal and system analysis? That means, if there is a signal, can we accept the system characteristics? It's not easy. I'm just saying, if, why don't you look at it rather than saying that I want to accept the frequencies of this and so on? So, yeah, this is the time because speech is produced by a time varying vocal tract system. For example, if for the past one hour, if I keep saying only ah oh, like this, what message you are getting? You are not getting anything. It is the time varying vocal tract system that conveys the message and the resolution of both the time, whatever if you still want to use the word frequency, the resolution is dynamically change your uh, perception to capture the sounds. And which you cannot, you will miss all of that the moment you apply a DFT. The moment you apply a DFT, 20, uh, whatever, 20 millisecond, 10 milliseconds, uh, 5 or point DFT, all that is lost. Because <coughs> you may say, no, 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 this power processor doesn't know that there is a quasi stationary assumption and so on. Sorry, speech is not, a, speech production system varies continuously at every instant of time. The system varies so much. Those of you who know a little bit about speech production, you can see that uh, the vocal fold vibration that is there which is producing the, you see, the, it opens and closes within less than 10 seconds. Okay? And when you open the system, it from this to the lungs. And when it is closed, the system is only this. And in between, some other shape. So the system, the production, and that is human being, you can see that. You can find, somebody talked about speaker, speaker recognition and so on. Those are and the speaker features are there, but you don't know how to pull them out. As a human being, that is why you don't need ton of subtweets or somebody to recognize a person. Yeah, right. You simply need one subtweet, ah, oh, yes, this is this guy kind of. Okay. So that means there are features there, how to extract. So if you look at it from a system point of view and try to see if you can extract this, I'm not saying it is possible. 
I'm just saying that in the way we are doing, whether it's possible to do it in a bigger speech in the time output of a time varying system and with a time dynamic resolution and so on. And uh, this is what needs to be done if you are really want to really develop new algorithm for signal processing, for example, processing like the what to signal, when I say signal, I talk about what the natural signal, not synthetic signals and so on. Because synthetic signals, the purpose is very different. And the thing that is a lot of uh, talk about representation of signals. I just can briefly mention a few. In direct representation, all of us know what is called, uh, you know, samples or pixels, whatever, in a two-dimensional for example, direct repair. And then another representation is by means of a basis function. The basis functions are Fourier basis, wavelet basis, and so on. Notice that the basic function you decide has nothing to do with the signal that you are processing. So they are fixed basis signal. And of course, I say no wavelet function is better than this and so on. Of course, if you can, you put only those examples, which will work, and I can give hundred other examples where it doesn't work. Because they are fixed basis. Where then people came up with a more recent phenomenon last 10 years or so, is what is called derived the basic function from the signal itself. This is a, uh, this goes with a different name called dictionary learning and things like that. Is, you derive the basic function from the signal itself, but that is not easy either. And, uh, and uh, then of course more recent one, more recent is again four by year, so called compressor sensing. What is the compressor sensing? is only to compress the signal and reconstruct it, it has nothing to do with the content of it. It takes quite the, because mortal signal, whether the speech, image, whatever it is, is a smart city, and it is the smart city part that is acquired in compression sensing. And so, in compression sensing, you don't use the domain knowledge at all. You only, that is why, for example, for images, Compressor sensing works very well, whereas for speech it doesn't work because it is not sparse in the time domain speech. It may be sparse in spectral domain, but it is not sparse in the time domain. But the moment you compute a spectrum for speech, you have already destroyed or you have already incorporated the artifacts of the estimate. So it is a beautiful thing to look at. So compressor sensing is not that effective in speech case. Because the sparsity is not in the time in the uh, end of it, in the case of speed. Where in the case of me, it is right in the main domain. And uh, so, what uh, at least when I say I am proposing now, I force my students to think about it. Don't look at, of course, you need to use some of these tools, but I ask them to think about time varying system. What are those times when you are listening to me, when you are taking down some notes, or when you have to uh, reproduce what I said, let us say, you capture certain units. So if it is, if you are an expert in speech and politics, you capture them. But otherwise, if you are otherwise, you understand speech and write down all in the message part of it. Here. So you capture certain things and then write down or reproduce, re repeat what I said and so on. So that means you have already captured the time varying system characteristics of my system. So why I am saying that system is of Pinning them into frequency or something like that is that yes, system in time you can represent because it is a handle problem that we are talking about from a system, the dynamic system. And is it possible to extract that from the signal? From the as of now, the answer is no. In the, in the lab, we have been working on one of the goals I set for myself for 20, 30 years ago is when I, the moment that the more I talk about speech and speech signal processing. Uh, in the classes and so on. I keep getting a, can I any day determine the characteristics of the system <coughs> in every sampling instant? At every sampling instant, can I determine the characteristics of this product? I don't mean to take only one sample. You take other samples also, but at every sampling instant, that is one of the challenges. <coughs> As you can see, normal DFT, the more, the, the same standard time frequency resolution. If you take a shorter window, frequency is gone. If you take a longer window, time is gone. Time resolution is gone. So can you beat this? In fact, recently we have some results, but I don't say that they are very good, but anyway it was published, so it should be there. So that is the way you look at it. But uh, the way we are trying to extract the open back speed 
production characteristics, system characteristics, and every instrument of fact, whether the population is speech communication, general uh, this year, uh, last year, 2013. And uh, the pure only thing that has happened, of course, we are trying to get at, is that it requires huge computation. And at every instant, you may need to compute about half a dozen or equivalent four eight or sounds of that 24 or thousand. Uh, to 2048 uh, DFTs and so on. But it doesn't matter. I am not worried about the computation. I want to know. And in fact, we are faster. We are happy to see that we are indeed able to capture or derive the high varying characters of the system. And of course, if you want to, still the algorithm is not perfect, but if you want to really implement that, of course, we need to use computation power. Maybe VLS is one of them. I don't know. So, so this is a. So, Summary of this is what I want to say here is there is a need, need to look at this signal in a different way, not in terms of the tools that are already provided, algorithms that are already provided. You need to develop the algorithm for the day, for the for speech it will be different. For some other ECT it may be different, for some other signal it may be different. Yes, music may be different, but each one requires a different treatment, not the same DFT. Those of you are a little familiar with so-called well capture provisions and all kinds of things, HMO models, these are all nice, you know, they are, uh, people are almost 10,000, people are working on all of these and they say they have one percent better performance than another. All this is okay, but uh, my fundamental question here is, although I am also doing the same thing, why should I take 15 milliseconds of speech when the system is so varying in fact? Because uh, nobody has an answer. 10 millisecond 20 was quasi stationary, it is not quasi stationary. So that is why jokes go around in speech community, at least in a uh, smaller circle. 10 millisecond because you have 10 fingers, 20 millisecond because somebody said you have 20 fingers by this it goes. Otherwise, you can't give a justification. You can't give a justification why you are using that, but of course, if you are to apply any digital tool, you need a finite duration. Uh, this one. So, what I think. In conclusion, what I would like to say here is the signal processing, there is a human difference in most of the cases. And uh, so, this applies even for medical doctors. His expertise is in the ability to capture that uh, slight information which you cannot capture through any of the methods. Okay? So, I am referring to primarily, let's say, in the case of speed, the, the, the time varying system is the one that is so effective, carries so much information about the speaker, about his mood, about the message, about the environment, so many, and all of them are embedded in the But this is the one that has been keeping at least me and my team, and now my team is my students also have become professors. They are also keeping their students busy like this. So the, this is uh, uh, growing. Now, population in terms of looking at the speech in a slightly different way. Not that we have solved the problem, but I think the first step in solving the problem is at least think different. And uh, so, unless you have a proof for that, the challenge which you already have faced, it is very difficult to deal with the audio and video bits that you are collecting. And it is so easy for us to collect this audio, and the challenge is, as I told you, it may not uh, agree with me. In openly, but in private, you will agree that the most of the audio video data that we collect, we throw it away. We don't look at them at all. If it is an album where you will print that photograph, you look at them all the time. If it is a video of one hour, all these wedding videos and so on, I don't think we have seen any of them data. So that is the, the because first of all, even if you want to see whether somebody attended that or something, if you want to keep it's not easy because there is no interesting. So much of research has gone in character recognition and uh, uh, speech processing and so on. We simply don't know how to match the two hands into character. I will write A and the next time I will write A and you don't know how to match it. No other to And don't tell me that no, give me 10,000 million samples I will train. You have never seen my handwriting. If I write on the board A, and in fact, you can see for security transactions on the machine, they use this idea of a human process. You do remember all security transactions, what will they do? They will ask you to type some numbers. Some numbers that are written in a why do they do that? 
Why do you the art of death? Machine cannot do it. Only human being can. They want to make sure that the human being is in the city can spread away, and that is why they have to develop character. Even such simple characters, machines cannot do it when they come in that way. And what to talk about hand, uh, hand written characters kind of. And of course, what to talk about hand writing? No chance at all. That's why human being, even you love, hope so. You love to read somebody's hand written letter rather than somebody dirty, you may, you know, say you as you and uh, some all get up, you know, the library. Sometimes students send the the beautiful thing is when I see 99% of the mails I get from students, I never even get them. Because when I see this character, I just know he's not working. It's a separate type of thing. And that is why some of you have returned to me and uh, I didn't respond. That is the reason I don't respond. And uh, so, but on the other hand, handwritten letter, how to see that? So there is something more than the message itself. That's the point I want to convey here, although my knowledge of the main processing is very poor. So challenge is dealing with audio and video page and need for signal processing and new algorithms. And there's one more thing which I didn't mention, of course, it's a, because I don't know how to articulate it well. But uh, the signals again as a human being that we process, it is not just one dimension, it is a multimodal signal, whatever it is, and the dimension of the space in which you process the signal is a very high dimensional space. You don't process in one dimension, two dimensions, in millions of dimensions. And so you begin to see the patterns in the high dimension, and only human being can do it because of the fibers and all that. And simple machine with a one-hour architecture, parallel processing, distributed processing, sorry, none of them can do this. So it is a determining the information or a pattern. In fact, the beauty of that is when you are listening to somebody's lecture with all these gestures and so on, suddenly the, what is, gets into your head is the higher dimension. You go to higher dimension uh, space and then get the pattern. There is no way to project. In fact, the moment you know, you project it off, uh, in fact, the moment I stand like this for the past one hour and start talking like this, then you don't get any information from it. So, the beauty of this is that how is it that it is being a process? It's a challenge, determine the information pattern, high dimension space. But uh, even if you tell me student, this is almost 30 years ago when I was giving uh, courses on your network, I said, Nobel Prize is waiting for you. If you ever you can tell that, if uh, you can develop a method to extract the information from a video that you see on a TV without going through number of frames per second and number of pixels per second. Without going through that, if you know how to extract that information, which as a human being you are getting. And, uh, and also I mentioned, I think the Beautiful way of summarizing it. This is the word I coined, whether it's right or not, I don't know. It is the distinction between processing and representation versus representation processing. These are the two different architectures, and it's like the more you know, think about it, the more diverse they are, you can never fit the gap between them. And unfortunately, human reference is there. As long as human reference is there, you see that gap widening rather than only way you can do that is you can make the human beings as dumb as machines. That's the only way. So hence you can see that there is a need what in summary one statement is that there is a need for new models of computing to deal with the information that is available in the sequence. And in that context I would conclude my talk by just quoting I just read in there. I hope I can read this. Um, yeah. I think this, all of you have uh, read this. Only people like me won't have read, but you know. Are you, anyway, let me read the question. The brain is more efficient by a factor of 10 million than the best digital technology that we can hope to attain in a typical silicon implementation. We switch about 10 to the power of 4 transistors to do one operation. And we pay a factor of 10 to the power of 4 for taking all the beautiful physics that is built into these transistors, mashing it down 
into a 1 or a 0 and then painfully build it back with n gate, n and r gates to reinvent the multiply. And we then string together these multiplications and additions to get an exponential. But we neglected a basic fact that the transistor does an exponential all by itself. How many of you have heard this? I'm sure all of you have heard this. How many of you have heard this? This is by Howard Me. He wrote a book on analog wheel aside. And surprisingly, of course, I remember this. I, I we were trying to dig up this, and uh, my slides I prepared uh, long back, and I prepared these slides. And this was mentioned by Howard Me in 1991, and I prepared. I looked at the slides where I quoted, and it was surprisingly, because I quoted this in a talk I gave at IIT Kharagpur on January 30, 1999. Interesting. I didn't know that uh, 24 three years ago I talked about this. You see. So, and uh, there is another. So this is my power me. In fact, uh, all of you know me and Conway book on VLSI and processors and so on. In fact, uh, I, I I bought that book in 1978 when it came, and I did thoroughly. And uh, uh, and of course then I said you know that was not make a book. Because I was uh, looking for how to process the speech signal to this in happen that it is so and uh, anyway I, I so one one more quote I will conclude with this. Uh, this you may not have heard. Right? Efficient machines for such purposes as pattern recognition, language translation, which your director was mentioning, and uh, so on. They require a different type of computer than any we have today. It is my feeling that is the author of the I will mention it later. It is my feeling that this will be a computer whose natural operation is in terms of patterns, concepts, and vague similarities rather than sequential operations on 10 digit numbers. How many have you heard, heard this? Was, this is a quote from the author of communication, Lord A.E. Shannon, and it was almost in 1960, I don't know the year. Lord A.E. Shannon, even in those days, they were saying that there is something that we may not be able to do with the purely digital technology. We need to come up with some ideas, new ideas, our ideas today. And uh, so, anyway, so what I like to say here is, is the signal processing, if you look at it from a slightly broader angle, it is so fascinating and it keeps us busy all the time. You can restitute of your papers, itinerary, you can restitute of your pay today, but you can never solve the problem. And that is how it keeps us, and this whole thing is interesting, and that is how. Of course, I was uh, still working in the speech signal crossing for the past 40 years now. Thank you very much for your time.